Dave Stegel here from Going to Eleven and Stegel Productions, and today I want to look a little bit at compressors and how they work and how they behave because I think there's some information that gets floated around that isn't necessarily accurate. So I have here this FabFilter Pro C2 compressor, and the thing I like about this is it actually will show us over time the way the compressor is actually working. So um, feeding into that, I have just a sine wave. It's just a steady state uh, sound so that it's going to hit the thing and set it off and it's just going to hold. So we can really look at how this thing behaves. So I've set the compressor up so the threshold is as, as low as it'll go basically. The ratio is as high as it'll go. And then I've got attack and release as fast as they'll go right now because I just want to hit this hard so that we can see how it works. And just to give you an example, I'm just going to bypass this. We're not going to listen to this because this would be painful to listen to. But if I um, unbypass our signal generator here, we can see how the compressor works. So that red line at the top is what the compressor is doing. We can see right here, here's our, our gain reduction that's going on. If I bypass it, we see it goes up and releases. If I unbypass it we get that signal and it comes in the um this gray area here that is what the signal is doing if i adjust the level of the signal here you can see that that going up and down the incoming is this light gray and what goes out is this slightly darker gray let's put this back so attack and release there are some people, when they describe attack and release, they say that it's how long the compressor waits. And I'm not exactly sure that that's really what they do, but instead of us being sure or unsure, let's just look and see what happens. So if the attack control and release control tell a compressor to wait, then we should see an identical curve of the compressor working no matter what speed we set that attack at because if it's just telling it to wait that means the compressor is still going to ultimately respond sort of along the same lines right so let's bypass this so just look at the shape when i unbypass and turn on the signal of what the compressor is doing this is with the fastest attack so we can see it just goes pretty much straight into attenuation. Let's look at it again. Boom, straight down into attenuation. Okay, so I'm going to go to the slowest setting, which I have in another little setting there. Um, so now the attack is set as slow as it will go on this compressor. So if the attack is just telling it to wait, it should wait when the signal generator goes on, and then we should see that same drop. Just for reference, once again, there it is almost a straight down vertical line. So let's go to the slowest and see what happens. Huh, looks a little different, huh? Let's do it again. Just for comparison, once again, let's go back. This is with the fastest attack. Straight down, we go to the slowest attack. It changes. So what is this telling us here? Basically, this is showing us that the rate of the attenuation is changing. And it is changing based on how that attack time is set. So the attack time and the release time, and we'll, we'll look at that in a minute too, those are not telling the compressor to wait. They're actually controlling the speed at which the compressor works. Let's look one more time. Fastest slowest very very different and this is just one style of compressor if we look at let's let's look at the clean we'll go to fast well oh, let's go to clean clean on fastest again we get almost a straight drop if we go to slowest oh that's interesting we got not only do we get a slightly different shape but now our compressor is operating quite differently. We're not getting as much gain reduction. We're not getting a consistent amount of gain reduction. There's movement. This is a steady state signal. Interesting stuff. 
So let's go back. Let's go back to that mastering style one because it's fast. And this time, let's go from the fastest release to the slowest release. So here, we'll put on our signal. So just watch it as it releases and comes back up. So we get this this little curve. There we go. What happens if we slow it down? Again, we're seeing a different curve, and that's interesting in there, too. Let's look at that again. Very interesting stuff. Again, if we go to fastest release versus the slowest release. See how much more gentle that is? Again, these are rate controls for how fast our compressor actually works. Now, one of the other myths associated with compressors is that the compressor doesn't begin to release until the signal level goes below the threshold. So, what do you think? So, my threshold's at neg 60. So for me, I should have to drop the signal level all the way to neg 60 for it to release. Let's see, does that happen? No. The minute that level changes, the compressor responds. So if we have a very dynamic signal, which is basically every signal we put into it, um, that compressor like say on a vocal is going to constantly be attacking and releasing which is why these attack and release controls can be so important to us when we're setting a compressor so why why is it that when we set our attack slower we feel like we get more punch out of our compressors well let's look at a, a real simple thing i have a couple of sine waves here Let's close these windows down. So in the top window, we have a, this is one wavelength of a five kilohertz sine wave. And then down below, we have one wavelength of a 100 hertz sine wave. And hopefully what you see here is that the wavelength of five kilohertz is much shorter than the wavelength of 100 hertz. And with that shorter wavelength, that also means shorter time. So when we slow down the attack, we're basically making the compressor slower than the wavelength of upper frequencies. And those upper frequencies, like 5K, 1K, these are the kinds of things that give instruments with transients attack clarity, articulation. All of that stuff comes from higher frequencies. So by increasing the attack time and slowing it down, the compressor is turning down slower than those wavelengths. So we get to perceive some of that frequency before these other frequencies and before the compressor can turn it down. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a, it might be a little confusing, so let me let me try and explain it one more time. When we go with a slower attack time, we are basically slowing the attack time so that it is slower than the time it takes for the wavelength of higher frequencies. So these higher frequencies pass through a little bit. I mean, they don't all pass through because the compressor will eventually attenuate. And if that frequency is in a sound and it is sustaining, eventually the compressor is going to reduce that, that frequency and level. But with the initial hit of something like a drum or a consonant from a vocal, those higher frequencies, if we slow our compressor down, they get through. A big place where you really notice this is with sibilance on a vocal. The real whistly sibilance stuff is often in the 8, 9, 10K range. So when we slow down 
our compressors attack, the compressor can't work fast enough on those high frequencies. And we hear some of it come through. And in some situations, especially with vocals, those high frequencies might be accentuated by the compression we're doing, which is why sometimes we add a de or later on. So anyways, I hope that helps explain some of this a little bit. Um, if you've got questions on compression and things, throw a comment here on YouTube or you can find me on my website and put a comment up there. Thanks.